How is it going? Hope you guys are all doing great out there today, and we are going to talk about practicing. So, uh, one of you guys mentioned uh, talking about a practice routine, uh, which might be a later video, but then it kind of got me thinking, I was like, you know, maybe just a, a video talking about uh, tips, you know, things that I really think are crucial to incorporate into a practice routine. Now, there's a lot of other ones you can incorporate, but um, these are just some of my ideas of, you know, pretty crucial elements that might be overlooked. So, if you guys want tabs, I have examples for a lot of stuff I'm talking about. Those are down below, they're over on my website, along with lesson packs on specific techniques like picking, legato, all that stuff that you can check out over there. But other than that, I'm just gonna quit yapping and get to rock. All right, so tip number one is going to be have a dedicated section of practice. What I mean by that is, you know, a lot of times when we sit down and practice, our mind might start to wander and stuff like that. And what I really want you to do is focus. Focus on what you're doing. Focus on how you're moving your fingers. Focus on how you're picking. You know, I'm just being honest with you. Um, have a very structured practice. So what I have here is I have a lick for you that's going to involve, for one, multiple picking and hammer-ons, and um, you know a different pattern than what you might be used to. So I'm pulling this out of the A major scale. So if you don't know your A major scale, it's gonna go like this. Okay, so what am I doing here to make it a little bit more interesting? I'm gonna be going like this. A lot of stuff is actually happening here with this lick. So like I said, I'm using the scale. Um, an important thing is I'm not using all the notes of the scale, which can be a trap uh, for, you know, a lot of times when you're learning scales is we want to use all the notes all the time. So what I have here is a lick that is utilizing multiple techniques. So I'll play it one time slow and watch both my right hand and my left hand. So I'm going. <laughs> So when I started out, I'm going five, seven, nine on the A string. So I pick down, up, down. Okay. Now when I go to seven on the D, I'm going to do another down. I do two downs in a row. Okay. I'm going to go to uh, what is a six on the G, which is another down. Okay. Then I'm going to go to seven and nine on the G. So. So I'm going to a down. Now I'm going to go back to that seven, but I'm going to pick up. And I'm going to do a pull off back to six. So okay. Then I'm going to go back to seven on the D, which would be another up. And then I go to nine on the A, which is another up. So okay. Then I'm going to do a pull off to seven. I think I forgot to do that in the initial video, but I do a pull off. And when I start over again, I'm back on down. So I've used economy picking, some alternate picking, and um, a hammer on a pull off in there to kind of like rearrange it to where it's gonna fit with these different techniques. So again, real slow. What is this lick? Why give this to us? Because, like I said, there's a lot going on. It's going to need a lot of focus. So that's got to be number one. Have parts of your practice. It doesn't have to have the whole thing be like this, but have a very, very focused section of it where you're really grinding down on what your hands are doing, what notes you're playing, and stuff like that. So on to like number two. Now, why don't we just hang out in A major since that's where we kind of started at. And um, what we're going to do is, I want you to always remember to practice musically. So when you're playing your scales and stuff, like I said, we're still doing A major. It's super important, you know, practice your scales, very technique focused. I don't want to overlook that at all. That To me, the technique is part of the dedicated practice of part one. But um, So you have that happening. And what do we want to do? We want to practice musically. So even when you're playing your scale, you know, you can play it musically. So listen to how I'm going to play it. So, you know, I guess another like section of this could be practice, you know, playing rhythmically because I'm basically just adding a rhythm to the way I'm playing the scale. And see if you can come up with a repeating melodic sequence, you know. It's because we want to avoid, you know, only practicing the scale in that typical. And why 
is that? Because that just sounds like a scale, to be honest. It sounds exactly like what we're playing, a scale. And we want to practice musically. So sit there and come up with practice. So let's do that first one. I'm just going to do the scale, but I'm doing notes of three. I'm doing like a three, three count. And four is basically silent. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The four is silent each time. So I'm going to go five, seven, nine, and then pause. Then I go down to the A string. Then six, seven, nine. Go to the G, six, seven, nine. Seven, nine, ten. And seven, nine, ten on the high E. Okay, so. Rhythmically, we're not playing them all the same way anymore. We're not just going. Which is nothing wrong with that. I mean, there's times when that sounds great. Like, I love that, you know? But, um, you know, focusing on the rhythm side of it is very, very crucial. So I always want to kind of emphasize that. Now, number three is going to be learn something new. You should learn something new every single time. And what I mean by that is you don't have to learn a new lick every single time. You don't have to learn a new scale. What I want you to do is to at least play your scale, if you're, you know, if you're working on scales and stuff like that, or riff or rhythm or chords, play them in a different way. So we're gonna take our A major scale here, and instead of going like this, I'm gonna go like this. So I went through the scale in a very different way, you know, and that could be a great one to practice, just going. So you have that. So what exactly is happening here? Well, I'm going five to seven on the lowest string. Now you could hammer on or pick it. Um, I'm doing a hammer on, so I go five to seven. Then I go to seven on, I'm sorry, five to nine on the low E and seven on the A. So I've skipped quite a few notes now. It's very arpeggiated now. So we're gonna go from that. Now I'm gonna hop down to the D string. I'm gonna go six to nine, and then seven on the G. Go to the B string. I'm gonna go five to nine, and then five on the high. So boom, right there. So that in itself is really good. Now anything you can ascend, you wanna be able to descend. Now I am adding quite a bit of palm muting to these, so. Um, that's you know one to talk about a little bit later, but always focus on your right hand too. Don't forget and just only work on your left hand. So incorporate a lot of palm muting. It's going to clean up a lot of this stuff. Number four is going to be exactly what I was just talking about. Don't forget about this guy. Your right hand has a huge input into the way that we are playing things. You know, uh, there's so much focus put on left hand because the left hand has to learn all these different shapes, all these different chord patterns. All that kind of stuff. Well, don't forget about this guy too, because there's a lot going on over here. So, um, for example, to play that scale, what I want you to do is we're going to play the scale, and the first three strings are going to be muted, and the last three strings, uh, last three strings, sorry, words are getting all caught up here, is going to be unmuted. So we're going to go like this. It's giving us a new level of dynamics, and when you work your left hand and right hand together, obviously as well as like volume control. Uh, you add all kinds of dynamics to your playing. So let's do that again. So it's very simple, but effective. This is how the volume transitions. So we're gonna go, just the first three strings of the scale, five, seven, nine, five, seven, nine, six, seven, nine. Do the bottom three, unmuted. Six, seven, nine, uh, seven, nine, 10, and seven, nine, 10. You know, maybe double. You send it. Again, you hear those dynamic all coming into play there. That's our right hand. And also practice rhythmic things. You know, maybe the, you know, very funky riffs are great for working on your right hand control. So tip number five, and uh, this one is always end your practice sessions on a good note. Um, you know, as musicians and guitar players, we're going to come across things that are going to be the ultimate nightmare to try and learn. And it's important to not quit, you know, with that. Do not end your practice session frustrated, um, you know, discouraged about the instrument. You do not want to do that. That is a terrible thing to do. So if you're having a hard time working on maybe one of these licks, maybe that one is giving you a little bit of trouble, you know, whatever it might be, sit there and be like, okay, you know what? I worked on it a little bit today. 
let's not get frustrated with it. Let's kind of come back to it a little bit later. What do I like to play? Play something fun. Play a riff. Maybe, maybe you like to jam to Rocky like a hurricane. <laughs> That's totally fine, man. Rock out to that stuff. Have fun with it. Don't worry that you can't play it perfect the first time around. You have to be able to go back and kind of like reevaluate it a little bit later. But, you know, maybe at the end of the practice session, just jam on some riffs, you know? There needs to be that set side of like dedicated practice. You're focusing on new ideas, stuff like that. And also just the part where you have fun. Always remember, why are we playing this instrument? I guarantee you, it is because you enjoy it and you want to have fun, you know? Don't get caught up on the frustrating parts of it. Focus on the fun side of it. So that is a huge, huge bonus. Um, I don't really have a riff for you guys for this one, but um, just, you know, jam out to your favorite riff. That, to me, that's the ultimate tip, you know? End on a good note. All right, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. If you would, comment below. Like, give me more ideas, you know? What exactly do you guys want to see on the channel? So other than that, make sure you get the tabs. We'll keep on rocking. I'll see you later. Peace out and I'll